Let's walk through what's going on on the stand right now because it sounds rather intense. The defense has called Robert Costello as a witness. He was a lawyer who at one point had advised Michael Cohen. Uh, in the last few weeks, uh, he has been coming out and saying that Michael Cohen is lying about him on the stand. Uh, he testified before Congress, before Republicans in Congress. And some of what's going on right now uh, is, for instance, um, Costello said uh, that uh, he, Cohen told him 10 to 12 times during the, their meeting, I swear to God, Bob, I don't have anything on Donald Trump. So that, that's, he is there to impeach the credibility uh, of Michael Cohen. But what's going on is that Costello is really expressing uh, disdain for Judge Mershon's rulings. Um, Costello shakes his head as if he was exasper exasperated when Judge Mershon sustained an objection from the prosecution about one of the answers. At another time, um, when the, the prosecution objected, Mershon told the lawyers to approach the bench, and Costello uh, could be heard saying on the microphone, ridiculous, just saying ridiculous while the uh, attorneys are at sidebar. Uh, then at another time, there was another objection which was sustained. Costello lets out a, Jesus, I'm, I'm, that's my interpretation, but that's how one says such a thing when they're frustrated. Uh, Mershon leans forward and says to the witness, Mr. Costello, sorry. Uh, and then Beauvais returns, no, no. And then, it, and then at one point, the judge actually asks to, for, the, for the, the trial to take a minute. He tells the jury to leave the room. This is a pretty extreme thing to do. And he tells Costello in a raised Jake, voice. Jake, the judge has just cleared the entire courtroom. It yeah. appears that now this has escalated to a security concern and the overflow is cut. We're not getting any more information. I mean, the fact that this has escalated to this extent, this is part of why there was disagreement within the Trump world about whether they should call Bob Costello. The only reason he is being called is because the client insisted that he be called. There were people on Trump's team that thought he would be too much of a yeah, liability. So, and Paul, the fact that the judge has now reprimanded him for staring him down, yeah. this is really taking a turn. So, yeah, that's what I was I was getting to that. Uh, he told Costello in a raised voice uh, when he told the jury to leave, Mr. Costello, you're to remain seated. The jury leaves. Then Costello, after another sustained object objection, Costello rolls his eyes, lets out an audible sigh, side glances the, the judge the judge says i want to discuss proper decorum in my courtroom the judge says you don't give me a side eye and you don't roll your eyes the judge says when there's a witness on the stand if you don't like my ruling you don't say geez you don't say strike it costello holds a long glare at the judge judge marchand says are you staring me down then the judge says clear the courtroom there's yelling by security officers at the press to leave. The video is cut. Court security says nobody can come back in. Paula, uh, you have a JD. You've been covering court cases for quite some time. <laughs> have you ever seen anything like this? No, this is unbelievable. And I know Bob Costello quite well. I've talked to him for about a decade. The fact that he would allow this to happen on the stand, it suggests in many ways that he is probably posturing for the defendant. Remember, it's the defendant that overrode his own defense attorneys. They said, this is not a good idea. Do not put Costello on the stand. He overrode them because he loved Costello's performance uh, in Congress last week, where he attacked not only Bob Costello, but also this case and the judge. So the fact that Costello would conduct himself in a trial like this, potentially jeopardize a case like this, I am actually pretty surprised, but it validates the concerns that have been uh, expressed by members of Trump's defense team about why they did not want to call Costello and also reminds us why when the defendant calls the shots and not the defense attorneys, you can have something like this happen. And Paula, I mean, Bob, Robert Costello, Bob Costello, he is an attorney, right? I mean, he knows how important yes. it is more than the average uh, Joe on the street to show respect and deference to a judge's rulings. I mean, these are just objections that are being sustained. I was there last week or the week before, and you know, cust I mean, a Judge Marchand sustains objections from both the prosecution and the defense. I know the defense doesn't think he's fair, but as a general note, uh, what I saw seemed, you know, in keeping with uh, courtroom proceedings. For him to do that, uh, it, that's, that's knowing hostility. I mean, that is knowing animosity towards a judge's ruling. 
Jake, this is this is unbelievable that he would engage in this kind of conduct, force the entire courtroom to be cleared. I reiterate, there have always been concerns about Costello. Uh, Costello is the only defense witness called before the grand jury in this case. His testimony, uh, he said, resonated with the grand jury, but he didn't stave off an indictment. He was not expected to be called until late last week when Trump said he had to be called. This is so over the top undermining everything the defense has tried to do for their client over the past a week or so. Uh, it's unclear how, what impact this is going to have on the case itself, but this is exactly why certain members of the defense team did not want to call him. But again, I've dealt with him for a decade. I am pretty shocked that this is the way that he's behaving on the stand. Look, he has animus towards Michael Cohen, no doubt. He also has some ill will towards the judge. But the fact that he would engage in this kind of behavior in a criminal courtroom, in a historic case of this nature, is truly shocking. Yeah, and members of the media and the people in the gallery are being allowed back into the courtroom. Let me get my panel to weigh in here, uh, and I apologize ahead of time, per usual, for when I interrupt you to tell you what's going on inside the courtroom. Uh, but first, let me start with uh, Caitlin Polans, uh, who's been covering this now for quite some time. Uh, I'm pretty surprised. What about you? I'm pretty surprised, but Jake, this is maintaining order in the court. Uh, no, no, I'm surprised that Bob Costello, who is a you know a, a member of the bar, would would say Jesus when a judge makes a ruling he doesn't like and he's a he's not a he's not the, he's not the defendant he's a witness yeah and staring at the judge sighing rolling his eyes that's clearly not the sort of behavior that you would expect out of a witness and you know we can't say exactly why he's doing what he's doing but he is quite an experienced attorney and he is in this circle of people around Donald Trump who's been on the legal side of things more often than in this sort of position as a witness. He was Sue Bannon's lawyer. He was Rudy Giuliani's lawyer. He has been a lawyer in these cases for quite some time. In this context, he's a legal advisor to Michael Cohen, trying to put that fine point for the defense team that Michael Cohen's a lying liar who lies. Yeah. Uh, whether that's going to come across because of this level of disruption remains to be seen will be for the jury to decide. Elise Adamson, uh, what do you think? What do you make of it all? I mean, I am really shocked. The only time I've ever seen a courtroom cleared is when there's an actual security concern. Sounds like Robert Costello, who was that individual who was briefly counseling Michael Cohen for a couple months in 2018 and is testifying here that Cohen had told him that he did this all independently of Donald Trump and he never informed Donald Trump of the Stormy Daniels uh, test uh, uh, payment. This is now sort of a key witness here for the defense team. But with the jury in the room, clearly Judge Marchand very peeved to the point that he asked the jury and the press to leave. And they are now just only being let back in. OK, so I have some of this transcript that, that Vaughn is just reading out to our audience. Um, Marchand says, quote, I'd like to discuss. Pro these are from these are from our correspondent, our program's correspondent, Lisa Ferry, in, in the courtroom. I'd like to discuss proper decorum in my courtroom, Marchand says. If you don't like my ruling, you don't say geez. You don't say strike it because I'm the only one who can strike it from the record. Judge Rashawn, you don't give me side eye and you don't roll your eyes. Costello, I understand Rashawn, clear the courtroom. Um, this seems like, um, it seems very theatrical. This seems very Trumpian. What sort of damage can it do in the eyes of the jury? Can I just say, having I have been in a situation where I have had to and gotten court permission to have a lawyer for somebody testify. Those lawyers are dispassionate and careful, and they are only going to answer questions that they legally have to answer because they have a continuing duty of loyalty to their client or sometimes former client. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, and I would know in that situation, that they were being completely ethical and trying to adhere to their continuing duties to their client. This is the antithesis of that from what you're we're seeing. And just remind everybody who Costello is. So Costello is somebody who Michael Cohen spoke to and had an attorney client privilege relationship but ultimately didn't hire. He has worked with um, Rudy Giuliani and there has been evidence introduced and this also came up in the Mueller investigation. Um, suggesting that he um, and others were part of an effort to try to get Michael Cohen not to cooperate. Um, it'll be interesting to see how much that plays out on Cross. 
his behavior in the courtroom, let's just say it is not consonant with what I have seen with somebody thinking about their obligations to um, to that client or prospective client and isn't coming off as dispassionate. Yeah, I mean, Suzanne Craig, you've watched all of this. I've read it all, which is a, a distant second to seeing it. I've not read Mershon this, this upset in, no. in, in every day of the trial transcript that I've read. No, and I think what's really important about it is how much the jury reads him. You always see in these mm -hmm. trials I've sat through, this is my third one, and the jury and the judge have a real relationship. And I just, I think this is a really, it's a, it's a big error on, on Trump's team's part to have this sort of exchange happening in the courtroom. They really pick up on what the judge is thinking. And I think it works against whoever's doing this, which happens to be Trump in this instance. It's so ironic that everybody was saying, oh, Michael's going to, you know, be glib or bust or, or, or yeah. ravel. Yeah. 25 hours on the stand, nothing. This guy's on the stand for a half hour. So that tells you something. And, and Andrew, obviously, you know this infinitely better than any of us. That has to play on a jury. You know, when yeah. you see a judge behaving that way, it destroys the credibility of that witness. I mean, it's just, he might as well say, don't believe this guy. And they've got some smart jurors on there, including, I mean, not the, but two lawyers, too, who, you know, have seen this sort of thing before they've been in courtrooms, I'm sure. Um, you know, they're, they're going to be reading this. I mean, judges like jurors. I mean, the, yeah. and jurors like, like judges. judges. Right. Yeah. I mean, the, judges they are need each other. Them. That's the same like, yeah. like, exactly. like yeah. 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 thing. Dis disrespecting a judge as a witness not a it's just not a good thing and it's especially because it's going to feed the the reason it's not helpful so folks what you saw there was trump's team like look so apparently mikey's done at least i i don't know if they can call him back it looks like that part's done and sort of surprisingly people didn't expect that many witnesses called from the defense side because they have a chance after all is said and done to call their own defense and they did but it was so insulting to the jury to Juan Marchand, you know, the justice at the head of the case, and to everybody in the courtroom, uh, the individual jury members were so insulted, uh, ev everyone ran out of the courtroom, and the judge had everyone run out of the room and tore into them. And uh, at first, everyone thought it was, maybe it would just be the jury was so insulted, it would lead to the jury leaving abruptly, running out of the courtroom. But it was everybody, apparently, and they brought folks back in, but that's how bad this went. I don't think I've ever seen, not in this case, Again, there are moments where you, you bring the lawyers in, have a quiet conversation, implication being the jury won't hear every little detail, so it doesn't, you know, mess with the jury deliberation. Sometimes the jurors will be sent out of the room for the judge to give instructions to both lawyers or to a witness to say, don't say this or what have you, or you can't bring up this thing from the past because that'll prejudice the jury. In some cases, the judge will have the jury wait, uh, you know, after a lunch break or at the end of the day or at the beginning of the day to give instructions saying, okay, for this day in court, we're going to do this. But I've never seen them have the jury run out of the courtroom and have the media and all the audience run out of the courtroom because a Trump teammate, and this is a Trump witness, was so insulting to the jury members. It's insane.